Will Lowry, I hope you're having a great Monday. Let's talk some Alabama football. What's going on, Ryan? How are you, man? I'm I'm having a great day. Having a great day and, and just sort of trying to recap. And uh, uh, we did the good, the bad, the ugly uh, so far today. The good has been Joshua Jacobs. I think you would probably agree with that. Absolutely. He played a great game. You know, we've talked about him the last few weeks. Uh, and you saw him really embrace the starting role there. Um, I, I thought that uh, some credit goes to the offensive line as well. You know, we've been talking about uh, this stretch a few games here against lesser opponents and um, how it's important, and uh, I thought it played out pretty much exactly as you'd hope. You know, I mean, not a great start, obviously, but uh, I thought that we really started to kind of uh, establish ourselves, move the guys up front with the offensive line, uh, and establish the run game a little bit better in this game than we have uh, so far this season, which is something that's uh, certainly uh, something you want to see as you start to get into these uh, SEC games and the, and the really tough run that we've got ahead of us. We've got to be able to move the ball on the ground, and uh, I thought we did a good job of kind of starting to settle in and, and uh, get a little bit more comfortable in what we're doing uh, in that regard this week. And uh, Jacobs looked great, man. I mean, like we said, he's, he's got all the tools. Uh, continues to mature and, and uh, get experience every week, uh, which is important for a young guy like him, a, a true freshman. And, um, you know, it's just exciting to see. I mean, we've had so many good running backs come through. We kind of grow accustomed to just having a go-to guy or, or more than one go-to guy. Um, so, you know, I, I, Damian Harris has played well so far this year. Both Scarborough's had a few good runs. But uh, to me, Jacobs is by far the most impressive of the group. Uh, I'd like to see him continue to get carries and, um you know, he certainly didn't do himself any hurt this uh, this past week. So hopefully he can continue that on and uh, the offensive line can continue to improve as well. We're talking to Will Lowry right now in in the game right here in Tuscaloosa on Tide, 1029 and Tide1029.com, the home of Alabama sports. Uh, Will, then let me, let me stick with the offensive side of the football here for a couple of minutes. Uh, a little sluggish start. Uh, some of that, I think, was probably on Jalen Hurts. Some of it maybe on play calling. Maybe they were setting up uh, things later in the game. Uh, but your thoughts about Jalen Hurts' performance there in the first half? I, I think, uh, like you say, I mean, it was a, start, a slow start for everybody. And, you know, I, I don't know if it has something to do with just his demeanor. You know, um, obviously Calvin Ridley came out and, and said after the game that uh, Hurts came to him and kind of told him to calm down. You know, you, you never see him show much emotion. Uh, he's kind of just a, a, an even keel guy, which is certainly something you need in a quarterback. Um, but I don't know if that somehow contributes to kind of his slow start or, or starts. Um, you know, we've, we've seemed to be kind of flat on offense uh, starting out for the most part this season. Um, but ultimately, I think that his, his demeanor is a good thing in, uh, over the course of a game, as evidenced by the Ole Miss game when he's able to uh, take the shot and, and kind of roll through that adversity and lead the team back. So, um, you know, I really don't know what to say about that. I, it, it's kind of interesting to see. I, I, he just seems so, so calm out there. Um, you know, it's hard to compare him to anybody else. Typically, especially younger guys, you know, they get happy feet in the pocket. He just kind of lets it come to him. And, um, you know, it's a good thing. I think that he'll continue to uh, kind of develop in that regard. It's, it's good for him to seems to have more of a critical eye and, and uh, you know, letting the game come to him, which is what you want, especially at Alabama. Um, but, you know, still a lot of room for improvement, too. I mean, you saw him miss the, the throws that he missed downfield. I thought there were a, a, a good number of them. You know, he, he completed most of his balls, uh, but the ones he missed downfield, I thought were completable balls. A lot of times, uh, he missed some open guys, which may be you know part of the reason that we haven't seen uh, Lane open it up uh, so much for him, uh, like we've kind of been talking about. Um, so definitely some room for improvement for him, but. I still think it was a good outing for him. He made some great throws. He made some big plays in the game, which changed the course of the game and helped us put points on the board. Um, so, you know, it's, it's another promising game for him, I think. I mean, room for improvement is something you want to see at a guy his age. You know, you don't want to see him at their ceiling already. Um, and he's playing so well and, and, and got the offense uh, putting up points and winning ball games, which is the most important thing. So uh, doing that with still room for improvement uh, is a very promising thing. You know, reading a defense, does that come from just film study or does that just come from general experience in a game? Or both? Uh, both, I think. Um, I, I think that especially for a freshman, it's very difficult to read defense, especially uh, when you get into the SEC. Uh, and there's just so many different schemes. I mean, it's, it's so complex uh, that it can't really be relayed uh, to the to, you know, to the average fan. I mean, when you see the playbook, how thick it is and just how many different things are happening before the ball is even snapped, 
um, it's extremely difficult to do. Um, and that's, you know, that's why there's only a handful of guys in the world that can play it at the highest level. That's why that quarterbacks in the NFL, you know, who are very, you know, I say average, who aren't established, haven't established themselves as franchise quarterbacks, get paid hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, I mean, it's just such a difficult position to play. Um, and being able to read a defense is something that comes with time. It's something that comes with film study. It's something that comes with practice. So, uh, you know, it's, it's encouraging to see him handle uh, handle the offense and, and uh, read the defense well enough to, uh, you know, be able to execute the plays and put the ball where it needs to be to move the chains down the field and put points on the board, uh, which is awesome for, for a young guy. So um, it's a great thing that he's been able to do what he's able to do, but I definitely think that uh, with a full season under his belt and then a full off season to – uh, really kind of look back and watch film on himself as well as our opponents and, and continue to learn more about the game and the way that it happens, the way that things, that plays unfold, the pre-snap motions, the alignment, the disguises that the defense try to throw at you. Um, you're only going to see that those, those things uh, improve for him over time. So I think he's doing a tremendous job for, uh, for his age and for his position, you know, where he's at right now. Um, but definitely there's a lot of room for improvement for that uh, in the long term especially. So... Uh, he's doing a great job of it thus far. I think as much as you could ask of a freshman, for sure. Let me go to the defensive side of the football. I think the one thing that continues to stand out to me is these non-offensive touchdowns. Uh, it seems like these guys are just creating turnovers. And as Nick Saban talked about post game, he said it's just what we teach in practice. It's great to see uh, those techniques work because it emphasizes or you know reemphasizes that what we teach works. And these guys will now uh, go out and and use this technique to grip, get more turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you work on turnovers every day. You work on disrupting the ball. You work on finishing on balls. Even when you know that it's a dead ball, you know, if it's on the ground, you want to scoop and score it. Um, you want to be play- making plays on the ball when it's in the air. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a great thing to see. And I won't limit it to the defense either. You know, the, the special teams this year have done a great job. Um, you know, we've had some, some spotty kicks here or there or, or some mistakes here and there dropping a ball or two. But for the most part, our, our special teams have played just as much of, of an impact on the game. Uh, and putting points on the board as our defense and, and our offense. You know, I mean, uh, the defense and special teams are doing a great job of, of uh, impacting the game and, and putting points up. So that can't be understated. I know that's gotten a lot of attention this week uh, with, uh, you know, that I, I guess Alabama leads the nation and non offensive touchdowns uh, this season. Um, and I forget the stat, the number that uh, we've had since Coach Saban got here. Um, but, you know, it, it's just really encouraging. I mean, when you have that kind of weapons and that ability, uh, and, and the kind of playmakers that we do in the secondary and even at the linebackers and all the way up to the defensive front, uh, you know, with Jonathan Allen running the thing back a couple weeks ago. I mean, you know, it's just incredible uh, that there's that many athletes on the field that can take the football uh, to the end zone for a touchdown. You know, you just don't get that very often, and it's a weapon. I mean, like we talked about last week, I mean, you have to think twice before you throw it deep on us for a Hail Mary uh, before halftime or something like that with Eddie Jackson and Ronnie, those guys that can uh, – that can run it back. I mean, um, it's just a real weapon, uh, and it's something that's extremely useful, especially with a young quarterback and an offense that's still trying to get its legs under it and establish itself and its identity. So, um, you know, hats off to those guys, and hats off to the coaches, too, for uh, instilling that uh, belief in those guys, like Coach said, to make them believe that, you know, that's the way it can happen and then that you can impact the game that way, and they certainly have thus far this season. Mark Barron was quoted on CBS Sports Radio, and, and I know you went down to see Mark uh, there as far as the New Orleans Saints game last Monday as we were talking, uh, you were driving down. I'm going to read you the quote here. Uh, he said, the way that the program is ran, it's pretty much like an NFL program. He said, it might even be more complicated. He's talking about the NFL. Well, actually, I know for a fact that it's more complicated than a lot of NFL systems. So just having to learn that and go through the whole process of putting in the work and the work that it takes to be successful at Alabama, that prepares you for the work uh, that you have to put in and come in and have success in the NFL. End quote. That's Mark Barron uh, saying that that the Alabama defense at times is more complicated than the NFL, some of the teams they run in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, it's extremely difficult. You know, uh, something that was a, a strength of mine that was what enabled me to play was, you know, my ability to grasp the defense and uh, and to be able to make calls on the field and understand what was going on and, and get folks in the right place. And um, I'm, I'm not going to lie and sit here and act like it was easy for me. It was not easy at all. I mean, that playbook is, I don't know how many pages thick, but it's thicker than any textbook I ever got for school twice over. I mean, it's 
extremely complex. Like I say, I mean, when you get a call on defense and you, and you get on the field, there's so many words in the call. There's so many things that are getting conveyed in the call. And when the offense comes out, depending on the personnel that they have, the formation that they're in, uh, the way that the receivers line up, the pre-snap motion, who moves, where the tight end is, how far out the wide out split out, all that dictates the way that you're going to play on defense. It's all reactive. So um, it's extremely difficult to understand everything that's going on uh, within one play and each call, uh, much less to do it and process it fast enough to be able to act on it and react and, and play the game at a high speed and at a high level 100% and be confident in what you're doing. I mean, it is extremely difficult. It can't be understated. I mean, Mark's right. I, I can't speak to the NFL level, but I just don't see it getting much harder. Obviously, Coach Saban has a, an NFL background, and uh, it's, it's a pro scheme. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, um, you know, and that's why you see a lot of guys that aren't able to end up playing. You know, I mean, there's a lot of guys that have come through our program that have every bit as much athletic ability as, as you know, the top guys in the NFL. I mean, I think of guys like uh, B.J. Scott, you know, I mean, guy had every bit of athletic ability in the entire world. I and mean, one of the best, best athletes I've played with. And, you know, it just, it just seemed that he wasn't able to, it wasn't able to click for him well enough, you know, to where he was confident enough to play, uh, you know, at, at, at a high speed and knowing what he was doing. You know, it's, it's, it's tough. And he's just one example. You know, there's a lot of guys that have come through and, and uh, you know, Alonzo Lawrence, another guy, guys like that that have a ton of ability and just for whatever reason – doesn't click for them. So, you know, it just says a lot for guys like Minka Fitzpatrick who's able to come in as a true freshman and uh, go out there and play. I mean, I, I can't tell you how hard that is to do. I mean, it takes a tremendous level of commitment and uh, dedication to film study and, and to just studying the game in general. Um, so, you know, it doesn't surprise me a bit that he said that. And, um, you know, it's just a credit to the guys that do get on the field uh, that, that make that commitment and make that dedication themselves to learn the system and learn it well enough to be able to play and, and to be comfortable with the guys around them knowing that they're going to know what to do and uh, being able to make the calls that are necessary on the field. So uh, it's encouraging to see, especially with as many young guys as we have, uh, you know, in the ones and twos and, and uh, even the threes on the depth chart right now. Talking to some of these defensive guys today at the uh, following Nick Saban's uh, noon press conference on Monday, I was really shocked at, at how you know excited they are to play a team like Arkansas. I mean, I mean, it was comments like, hey, it's a traditional team, and that's what we like to do. He said, you know, fastball teams wear us out as far as the defensive linemen, uh, but but it, they're really excited about going back and playing, you know, a team that's traditional set like Arkansas. Now, they're a balanced attack, uh, but you know exactly what Arkansas wants to do. They want to run the football between the tackles and, and be physical in the line of scrimmage. These defensive guys are very excited about playing uh, this type of opponent. Yeah, I mean Arkansas is a great team. Uh, they've they've you know obviously had a loss this year against A and M, um, and you know they they beat some good teams too though, and, and and they've been good. They were a great team last year. I thought they were one of the best teams in college football, getting hot there at the end of the season. Um, they've got a lot of talent. They've got some big big guys up front that can uh, move the line of scrimmage, um, and they've got a great back. You know, I mean they've got a great team, and it's going to be a really big challenge for us, especially on the road. Uh, I think we talked before about you know the time that we played there in 2010 and. Uh, man, that stadium gets loud. Uh, when those those fans get up, they make a big play. If they can jump on you early, uh, that place gets rocking. And uh, it's going to be a, a really hostile environment. It's going to be a tough place to play for us. Um, and, and like you say, I mean, they're looking forward to it. It's a team that plays pretty smash mouth. I mean, they've got some big guys. Uh, they like to go right up the gut. They're going to test you. They're not going to just, you know, give up on the run and start swinging it everywhere. I mean, they're going to try and impose their will on us and run the football. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge for our guys up front. They've been up to the challenge thus far this year. Uh, and, and just, you know, I mean, they're so dominant. Uh, we could talk about them for days. Uh, the front two strings of our front seven we could talk about for days. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident they'll have the ability uh, to stop them. But, you know, Arkansas is going to throw the kitchen sink at us. I mean, there's no doubt they've got some plays they've been saving. They're going to put some, some new stuff in based off of uh, our tendencies this year. They're going to be game planning. They're going to hold nothing back. So, uh, it's going to be an entertaining game. It's definitely going to be a challenge for us, and uh, I, I love to hear that. You know, I mean, it's, it's great that our team is so fired up to play a team like that. You know, I mean, we've talked before about the hunger that this defense seems to have, and uh, it just continues to get bigger and bigger. I think every week. I mean, those guys want to be great. They really do. You can see it in their play. You can see it in their eyes. The passion they have. They all care, and they want to play well. They want to play well for themselves. They want to play well for each other. And they want to be one of the best defenses to come through Alabama. And uh, I think they're on pace for it right now. I mean, 
done a really good job so far this year of uh, establishing themselves and, and uh, being a, a, an elite defense. You know, I mean, obviously we gave up some yards in the passing game against Ole Miss, which we talked about. I mean, facing an elite quarterback like that and, and good talent on the outside, sometimes big plays are going to happen. And uh, There's no doubt there will be a few big plays this weekend, but uh, it's about standing back up, forgetting that play, and moving on to the next one, which they've done a great job of this year. Um, so it's going to be a great challenge. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, you know, I think about Jonathan Allen, and I'm not talking about making money this year. I'm just talking about for the upcoming NFL draft. Uh, you think about the money that this young man has made from coming back one more year. Uh, he had eight tackles in that Saturday performance, one sack, one tackle for loss. Six of those tackles were solo. Uh, Jonathan Allen all over the football field from the defensive lineman perspective. Yeah, he is. He's doing it all for us right now. And, you know, he gets a, he does a lot that goes on unnoticed a lot of times. You know, he's sucking up double teams. He's He's clogging up gaps, you know, the dirty work that doesn't get noticed as much as the tackles. So uh, when you have a a defensive lineman like that that's able to actually make the plays, you just know that he's going above and beyond and and eluding those blockers and and making tremendous plays to be able to make the number of tackles and uh, impacting the game like he has. Um, And like we say, he's just one of them, you know. I mean, you know, as you mentioned, he's certainly rocketing up the boards. and He's put on a, a good bit of weight. I think it was discussed, you know, in the USC game a little bit. Uh, when he first came out, but I mean, it, to me, it was noticeably different how much bigger he is this year, and uh, doesn't seem to have lost a bit of a step either. So, great weight uh, for him. Uh, it's, it's a great thing for him. He's certainly going to have uh, tremendous pro prospects and, and a big time uh, come this April. But uh, you know, just one of them, man. I mean, Tim Williams, another guy, Deshaun Hand, Sean Deion Hamilton, all those guys up front, man. I mean, they are so good, uh, and, and they're physical. Uh, they know what they're doing. They know how to use their hands. They know how to get off blocks, and and, and they, they come with a fury when they get to the ball carrier. So they're a lot of fun to watch, man. This front reminds me a lot of the guys that I played with up front, just guys that you don't want to be blocking. <laughs>